2020, a brand new year, and that means it's time for New Year's resolutions. This is the time where we like to think about all the changes we're going to make to help us be fitter, healthier, more happy and positive people. But it is also a time to sort of reflect back and maybe identify some mistakes that we've made and learn from them. Which is why today I want to share with you the five skincare mistakes that you need to stop making in 2020. And look, skincare is a journey. We all start somewhere. So I hope that this video serves as perhaps a gentle reminder to those of us who have some bad habits, myself included, but also serve as enlightenment to those of us who may not know that we could be doing a little bit of harm rather than good on our skin with these bad habits. So give the video a big thumbs up and let's get started. So skincare mistake number one is leaving your masks on too long. Oh yes, I am so guilty of this one. I mean, sometimes you just lose track of time. I, I've totally been there, but I think some of us also think, wrongly with the best of intention but wrongly that leaving the mask on for longer is going to give us better benefits really any masks that are meant to draw impurities out and that claim to control sebum production these are masks that you need to be careful with the timing of because they can really dry out your skin right they're drawing impurities and drawing excess oil out but if they're left on too long they're just gonna keep pulling it out. And we know if we pull out too much moisture, you're gonna end up with dehydrated skin. No matter how oily your skin is, you can definitely get dehydrated. And dehydration and dryness and moisture stripping can lead to acne. It can lead to inflammation. It can lead to irritation, sensitivity, and redness. But don't think that you're getting away just because you favor sheet masks. Sheet masks should also probably be stuck to the timing as well. Now, sheet masks are a little bit different, and this is just more from my experience because sometimes when the air in your house or wherever you're masking is a little extra dry, the sheet mask actually dries out faster than the time that it's recommended. Usually between 10 and 20 minutes. Sometimes my mask dries out faster than that. And sometimes your mask will stay moist beyond the 20 minutes. So you can play a little bit more loose with this one, I will admit. But if you are starting to feel your sheet mask dry out or just feel a little less uh, wet in any area, it is time to remove it because once that mask starts to um, dry out even just a little bit, it's gonna start to pull hydration from your skin too. It actually has like a reverse benefit. Instead of delivering hydration in the skin, it starts to pull it out. So really, I mean, you wanna aim for the 10 to 20 minutes, but if you feel like your mask is drying out sooner, take it off. Or if you feel like you could go maybe five minutes longer, don't worry about it too much, but definitely keep an eye on how hydrated the mask is feeling. When in doubt, take it off sooner. Um, but definitely you don't wanna leave those masks on too long because that hydration and plump skin you were trying to achieve, you could be reversing those benefits. Eye patches are another one you don't wanna leave on too long. Really five to 10 minutes is the maximum amount of time for an under eye patch uh, to be left on. Because again, it can dehydrate your skin, you know? And you know you've left it on too long when you're pulling it off and you're like, it's like pulling off of your skin. It's so dry, right? I am so guilty of this. I'm like, ooh, I don't think that this was good. I left this on way too long. Now let's keep talking about eye patches because that is actually skincare mistake number two on my list. I wanna talk about the misuse of eye patches, but also some of our missed opportunities when it comes to eye patches. It's probably not a good idea to uh, match those eye patches up with your wash off masks. Yeah, do not do this. <laughs> Don't do it. Uh, don't do it because um, you're really not supposed to wash the essence of your eye patches off. And when you have a wash off mask, you gotta wash it off. It's basically the equivalent of doing your skincare all the way up to your serum step and then washing your face. It's like, what was the point? Um, you know, we love our eye patches for the cooling effect, uh, the depuffing effect. So many of us love to put them in the refrigerator and then put them on, right? Especially if you get puffy under eyes, it feels great, especially in the summertime. 
but that is not the only function of the eye patches. They are meant to infuse into your skin this serum or this essence that is meant to brighten your skin, to tighten your skin, to smooth your skin, to plump your skin. And if you wash that essence off, it's basically like putting eye cream on and washing it off. So there are more benefits beyond just cooling and depuffing. So if you really do need to uh, pair your eye patches up with a mask, I'd actually recommend doing it with a sheet mask. That's a much better way to do it because neither product needs to be washed off. You may need to, yep, remove those eye patches before you're done with your sheet mask. Remember, timing, but this is definitely a much smarter pairing. Now, a missed opportunity when it comes to eye patches is the fact that you don't have to just use them under your eyes. Yeah, you can actually think about your eye patches as targeted hydration patches, and they can be used more than just under the eyes. The biggest area that I think people miss out on is using them on the nasal labial folds. Yeah, that line that goes kind of from the corners of your nose down to the corners of your mouth. We all have them <laughs> to varying degrees, but you can actually put your eye patches there to help hydrate the area, plump out that line, kind of like blur that line a little bit by plumping it with hydration. You can use it on forehead wrinkles. You can use it on uh, frown lines, like right in between here, right? You could even put them on your neck if you feel so inclined. So definitely don't feel um, like constrained by the word eye patches. These can actually be used all over the face and deliver some great benefits. And just a quick word about how to wear your eye patches. I've seen this debate quite a bit on social media. Do you put the big round area on the inner part of your eye or on the outer part of your eye? What's the right way to wear them? Well, actually there is no one right way. Both ways are correct, but knowing how to use them can help you target your goals. Now, if your biggest problem area is uh, crow's feet, you know, little, little expression lines, fine lines, right at the corners of your outer eyes, then it's definitely a good idea to put that thicker, rounder area of the patch on the outer part of the eye. But if your biggest uh, concern is more puffiness, um, dark under circles, or maybe some lines underneath the eyes, then this is where you wanna put that biggest portion of the eye patch is just under the eye at, towards the inner corner by your nose. So both, it can actually function both ways. Neither one is right or wrong, it's just what works for you. Skincare mistake number three is not removing your eye makeup fully. Yeah, this is this is a this is a big one and not all of us intend to not remove our eye makeup fully, but sometimes we just end up doing it and we don't even know it. We got to get in there and we got to get it clean. And why do I say that? Well, let's just talk about like, you know, like eye hygiene. You definitely do not want pieces of your eye makeup floating around in your eyeball causing all kinds of issues, especially if you have sensitive eyes but let's talk about the fact that we're all skincare addicts. The point that makes, you know, the biggest impact to us is the fact that when you have leftover eye makeup residue sitting particularly underneath the eyes, they can settle into those micro, micro fine lines that you have, we all have them under our eyes, and it can actually deepen them and make them worse in appearance over time. Yeah, it can give you wrinkles. So we definitely don't wanna do that. So removing the eye makeup thoroughly is important. And really the easiest way to do this is to just add in an eye makeup remover. So many of us are just removing our eye makeup with our oil cleanser and our foaming cleanser. And sometimes that is enough, but it isn't a bad idea to invest in a separate eye makeup remover and just swipe with a cotton pad um, under and on top of your lashes just to make sure that any little extra residue has been removed because hey, better safe than sorry. Skincare mistake number four that you need to stop making this year and I feel the most passionate about is neglecting your neck and body Stop doing this, <laughs> stop doing this. It boggles my mind. Okay, let me take a step back for a second before I get all up on my high horse. Let me just admit to you, early in my skincare journey, I did not apply my skincare or my sunscreen to my neck. I will admit I, I'm reformed, okay? I am reformed. So I know where we're coming from with this, all right? But all that being said, you need to be applying the skincare that you put on your face onto your neck and to your chest as well. Yes, 
Here's why I say this, and this is why it boggles my mind so much that I did this and that so many of us skincare addicts were so passionate about skincare, but we stop our skincare treatments at our chin. Why do we do this? Because we are so, obs I mean, I'm gonna just put it out there. We are obsessed with taking care of our skin. We are obsessed with clear, glowing, youthful looking skin, right? We are kind of chasing that looking young for a long time kind of dragon, right? Right? I mean, we can all admit that we want to be looking young and good, right? So why in the world would you not treat your neck? Because here's the thing. If you don't put all that good skincare on your neck, you are going to end up looking really weird because you are gonna have a snatch face. You're gonna look young, youthful, glowing, smooth, and your age is gonna be so obvious because of your wrinkly, saggy neck. Need I say more? I don't think so, but I will. <laughs> please put your please put your, your skincare onto your neck as well. Back in the day, the reason why I stopped at my chin, I didn't even like really fully realize it, but I think I was just trying to save money and save product. Hey, your girl's on a budget, I get it. Do you have to put your like 30, 40, 50 dollar serum on your neck if you don't want to? No, you don't have to, but there's a couple of shortcuts to this. Um, one of the easiest ways is to just make sure you're moisturizing the neck. At the very minimum, just put your moisturizer on your neck, right? Maybe um, any kind of little extra residue of toners or essences that you might have or oils, just pull it down onto your neck, right? Sometimes some of us will wash our hands or wipe it off on a towel. Why don't you just wipe it off on your neck first, right? Just get that residue in there. But at the very minimum, moisturize your neck because that's gonna keep your skin supple and elastic and hopefully smooth over time. That's the very minimum that we can do to kind of bridge the gap between the whole young face, old neck kind of deal, right? Another tip that I think many of us don't think about, and um, this can be a good one for those skincare hoarders of us out there, right? Those of us who have a little bit too many products and can't quite use them up in the right amount of time. Any type of extra eye cream that you have on hand is phenomenal as a neck cream. Think about it. So many of the goals that you have for your eye area, right? Smoother skin, firmer skin, fighting wrinkles. Those are a lot of the things that we want for our neck area too. Yeah, we definitely need to fight that tech neck line, right? We all we all have it, that line that goes across our neck from bending over with our phones. Um, and just keeping that skin firm and uh, in place, right? Keeping it young and smooth. So you can use up any extra eye creams that you have onto your neck. So many of us I know um, are like, we use so little eye cream and the tubes are so big and it's like, how can I ever use this up before it expires? Well, you know what? Don't be stingy. Put it on your neck or invest in a very inexpensive eye cream to place on your neck. But this is like no need to spend $80 on a neck cream, guys. Just use an eye cream. One extra word about this before we move on. I'm fired up about this. <laughs> Body moisturizer, really, really important. Uh, like I said, at the minimum, all you should be doing is moisturizing your skin. And another telltale sign that I have seen this on people, uh, areas that really tell your age, like in ways you don't want them to, knees, knees. You know, you can have really old, saggy looking knees, ashy knees, um, but a, like a snatch face, like it just doesn't quite make sense. So it's not a bad idea to just take that little extra time, that little extra money to just get a body lotion, just a body lotion or a body gel or whatever, you know, suits your lifestyle. But definitely keep in mind that moisturizing all of the skin on your body is always gonna serve your skincare goals. And skincare mistake number five is a big one because mistake number five is please stop being a skincare hoarder. Yeah. This is gonna be a difficult one to unravel. As somebody who is a skincare YouTuber, let's just lay it out here. I have a lot of products. I promote a lot of products. I use a lot of products, right? So it feels a little bit hypocritical to say this, so don't take me wrong here, but what I really wanna say is, for those of us who are buying more skincare than we can responsibly use, let's let's put it that way because everybody's definition of what too much is is gonna be different. And I'm not here to judge you for having too much. But what I am here to say is we should be using what we have in a responsible manner. 
and sometimes the addiction can get a little bit out of control and all of a sudden you have all these expired products that you never opened. That's a massive bummer. That is a massive waste of money. It's a massive waste of product and it sucks. Now let me tell you, um, I learned my lesson when I realized I was hoarding and see, I do this and it's not even about having a lot of products, but it's about for me personally, like let's just get personal here. I hold on to things because I think that they're special or I save them for certain occasions that are very vague and perhaps never occur, right? I, I can get a little emotionally attached to certain things and I don't want to use them. Now, everybody is different, but even when I was just like a skincare novice, right? When I didn't have a channel and I didn't have access to so many products and I didn't own that much skincare, I was still hoarding. Like I was still hoarding and it really dawned on me that I was when I had to throw a bunch of expensive sheet masks out because I had, I had gotten them three years ago and they were so special to me because they were expensive. I never used them. What? And they expired. And then I was too scared to put them on my face. Like, that's totally reasonable to be scared to put an expired mask on your face. So I had to throw all these expensive sheet masks that I just loved and adored for so long. They ended up in the trash unused and unexperienced and unenjoyed. What is the point of that? What is the point of that? That hit me hard. And that is just a very small, you know, example of it. Um, but I know that so many of us do this because we do get attached to our skincare. We do get emotionally attached to our products and to our, our stash, or even some of us call it our collection. But it is skincare. It is meant to be used and it is meant to be experienced. So don't be afraid to experience your skincare, right? Don't hoard it. Experience it and use it responsibly because... Throwing stuff away that's never been used sucks so hard for so many reasons. It's not a good feeling and the feeling of waste is not a good feeling and we know that it's not responsible for so many reasons. So all I would urge you to do is just take a look if you've ever felt that feeling like I have too much that I can't use up in a reasonable and a responsible amount of time. Maybe we need to take a step back from some of those um, from some of those habits and just see how we can be a little bit better this year. So I hope you guys enjoyed that list of things I think we can probably improve on in the coming year. And you know, let me just say it though, you know that this video was not made to call anybody out or make any of you guys feel bad because let me be completely honest with you, this list that I created of all these mistakes is from personal experience. I have done every single one of the things on this list. So please just know skincare is a journey. And so many times people will ask like, how do you learn so much about skincare? And really, you want to know the answer? Trial and error. I mean, you just got to make the mistakes to learn from them, right? That's how we get better. So don't feel bad if you're making any of these makes mistakes. We've all been there. But if you feel comfortable, let me know in the comment box below, what's the one skincare mistake that you vow to stop making in 2020? Let me know in the comment box below. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, but you did enjoy this video and you love Korean skincare, please uh, consider subscribing. I release two new KBD Focus videos every single week. And don't forget to ring the alarm so you're never out of the loop when the new videos drop. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. I can't wait to see you in the new video and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.